Let a Misfortune tells the story of Misfortune, Ramirez Hernandez, an eight-year-old girl and her surreal journey through death and her traumatic past experiences. Hi folks, I'm R, your narrator. This video will contain spoilers about the game, including Fran Bo. With that said, let's begin. Benjamin, the Fox Order Protector, is sent by the Center City Order to rescue a victim called Misfortune. The Fox is from the Five Realities, which is a shared universe with the game Franbo. I have already explained the Five Realities in two previous videos I made about Franbo, which I recommend you to watch if you don't know what the Five Realities are. Misfortune is a special happy girl with a kind heart who has a horrible abusive family with many issues, such as infidelity, physical and mental abuse, use of alcohol, and much more. A narrator called Mr. Voice instructs Misfortune to play a game, guiding her to dangerous places. Misfortune, as going through her surreal journey, has to figure out who's good and who's bad. The fox or the narrator and she eventually unveils a horrible truth at the end about herself and why she has such experiences. The Fox, also known as Benjamin, one of the protectors of the balance of free or the five realms of essential existence, is ordered by death or the order of the five realities in Center City where the end of vibration is, and when both ends of opposites are the same degree, to investigate a new case with the ID P0101222, Margo. This case entails the victim called Misfortune Ramirez Hernandez, and a parasitic entity from a realm outside of the five realities, called Margo, trying to lure Misfortune into the beyond, a misunderstood realm, without any logical laws of physics. Misfortune has recently died and according to the order, must travel into Center City or the fourth reality where death awaits her. But Margot is trying to play games with her and add her to his collection of victims, presumably getting them stuck in a loop, then slowly take them to the beyond. Benjamin touches a gravestone with luciferns and live pine cones around it, which are connected to the world of Franbo, which creates a portal to the third reality, or also known as Pandora. We are then introduced to the narrator who gets called Mr. Voice by Misfortune, and Misfortune who is a special 8-year-old girl with a kind heart who desires happiness. As the narrator tries to tell the story of Misfortune, she tells him that she can hear him. Mr. Voice pretends to be a voice inside Misfortune's head, and after saying that Misfortune will die today, quickly takes back what he said after Misfortune confronting him about it. The sad part is, today is the day she will die. Huh, I can hear you, you know. Oh? You can? Mm-hmm. Are you inside my head or something? Hmm... Well... Okay. Yes. <laughs> Alright. I'll call you... Mr. Voice. O what did you say about me dying today? Die? No. Nobody said anything about anyone dying today. Mr. Voice makes a deal with Misfortune. If she plays his game, he will gift her eternal happiness, to which she agrees and says that she will give it to her mother, even though we'll learn through the game that she could very much benefit from it herself. Misfortune picks up a bottle of glitter, which she uses to make things become happy, and shows Mr. Voice her diary. In there we learn that her parents are very abusive towards her, and she hides in a hiding spot she has created when her parents argue. Her dad beats her mother and disregards Misfortune, 
This causes Miss Fortune's mother to become very anxious and abusive towards her as well. We also learned that Miss Fortune's mother wanted an abortion, but as it was illegal, she kept Miss Fortune, which shows her parents weren't ready, with her mother only marrying the father as she became pregnant. Miss Fortune also talks about a fox with a sachet bag that she calls Benjamin, hiding in the trash and around the house, whom she confesses to have feelings for. She also mentions about her friend Hiro, who wears an alien face mask and doesn't speak much English. Miss Fortune mentions about her glitter and how she believes that whatever she sprinkles with it becomes happier, which corresponds with a note later in the game which mentions whatever children desire becomes a reality. Hence why, whenever she sprinkles anything, they become happy. It's something that she desires. Before Miss Fortune leaves the house, she's instructed to choose between her two favorite toys, a unicorn doll and a stone she calls Stony, which was thrown at her by her father presumably in a fit of rage, with some blood smeared on top of it which could possibly be from the injury Miss Fortune sustained after getting hit. As Miss Fortune exits the house, we see tire skid marks of her father's car, which will play an important role later in the game, and how Miss Fortune died. As she arrives in the park, she notices a puppy tied to a tree with a sign saying no dogs allowed, which clearly suggests the owners of the dog abandoned it here. Miss Fortune has a choice to set it free or just leave it be. If she frees it, it'll follow Miss Fortune, at least for a short while. The dog unfortunately not much later gets taken by Blackbird suddenly, who doesn't reappear anymore until the very end. Throughout the game, Mr. Voice shows his concern and hatred about the fox, as he knows, he's a protector. But Miss Fortune is adamant that the fox is cute and friendly. Miss Fortune collects her first straw doll in the forest, which have notes with cryptic information. Mr. Voice asks Miss Fortune what she collected, but Miss Fortune denies to have anything. These dolls turn out to be left for Miss Fortune by the fox. To warn her about the voice and keep her safe, and lead her to the fourth reality, which are possibly invisible to Mr. Voice or the parasite called Margot. The fox tries not to make any direct connection to misfortune, as it's instructed through a letter we'll find at the end from Benjamin's bag. Benjamin is then found drawing a symbolic sign on the ground, which is also in the guidelines given to him. He runs away as soon as he notices Miss Fortune not to make any direct connection. Miss Fortune then picks up the paintbrush and finishes off the sign Benjamin was drawing. After completing it, Miss Fortune has a flash going into the ultra reality, where she's stalked by Margot, while these signs keep Miss Fortune's protected temporarily. Mr. Voice instructs Miss Fortune to go inside a magical cave, which in reality is a steep, dangerous cave, where children have died in before, with police caution strips being found next to it. Therefore, Mr. Voice is lying to Miss Fortune and is trying to kill her and lure her into the beyond. Inside the cave, Miss Fortune goes into an adult entertainment bar with hamsters and soon after goes onto the surface through a manhole. This is presumably an illusion by Margot to further please himself playing with Miss Fortune. On the roads, Miss Fortune finds people with white masks on, which are presumably worn by people to hide their true feelings and emotions. As previously, Miss Fortune informs us that her mother told her to smile, even if she's upset, indicating that the mother hides her emotions too. She also finds some anecdotal information from the fox to hide, and a drawing of a monstrous looking entity, which we later learn to be of Margot. A similar drawing which can be found in the beginning of the game, with be aware mentioned on it, was presumably drawn by the fox as well, to warn Miss Fortune of the deceiving Margot. Miss Fortune also encounters many blackbirds throughout the game, 
and birds falling down from the sky, dying, which is yet again another sign of Margot being present, with the blackbirds acting as his eyes and vision. As Miss Fortune continues her journey, she finds multiple missing children posters with their ghosts appearing, and writings from the fox saying to hide your children with a drawing of Margot. This could potentially mean that Margot has been the culprit of making many children die and vanish. Miss Fortune then digs a grave where she finds a box with a note inside saying that the eternal happiness was stolen by the fox. A clear lie written by Margot to deceive Miss Fortune into thinking the fox is bad. On a mystical gravestone which the fox was working on, we get more hints to why Mr. Voice is playing a game with misfortune. It reads that the game of death feeds the shadows of the beyond. Therefore, Mr. Voice is the parasitic entity from the beyond, who is feeding on misfortune while playing with her. Soon later, Mr. Voice guides misfortune to go inside a hole where the fox might be hiding. As she goes down, he presents her with a fox repellent spray. As she encounters the fox, if she tries to spray the fox, she by mistake sprays herself, which makes her get sick and faint. Mr. Voice quickly thinks to himself that he made a mistake choosing her to do this, and how disappointed he is at misfortune, which might suggest that Margot is tricking misfortune into killing the fox. Soon later, misfortune goes past a liquor shop where she informs Mr. Voice about her mother's drinking and smoking problems, and how she hugs strangers next to dumpsters, which is suggestive of selling her body for some quick cash, and how at one time she forgot her in the shop for an entire day. One time mommy took me here and forgot me. I got to play inside all night until a security man found me. He thought I was a raccoon. <laughs> Well, that sounds like it was a fun night for you. Yeah, except for me crying a lot, but it was fun. Miss Fortune then gets on a bus to go to a zoo to find the fox's whereabouts as instructed by Mr. Voice, where we learn a little more about Hiro, a ghost of a Japanese boy Miss Fortune talks to, who keeps saying, Kiri wa doko desu ka, which translates roughly to where are you? Keep this in mind, as we'll get back to it later. After going into a wolf cage to pick up a note as instructed by Mr. Voice to find Benjamin's address, Mr. Voice acts surprised when he sees the wolf doesn't attack Misfortune, seeming as if he wanted Misfortune to get hurt. After learning about the fox's whereabouts, Misfortune goes to a spooky fun fair where she finds another straw doll left behind by the fox in a vending machine which reads, reality will transform into what the child desires the most. Which can hint out to how Misfortune's occasional interactions with the people in the world were nothing but mere desires, things that she wants to see. Therefore, it brings a question to whether whatever Misfortune experienced in the world actually took place or not. Soon Misfortune comes across a Grim Reaper looking boatman who takes Misfortune across the water to a surreal looking world at the end of which is a cabin, which is rented by the fox. In there, Misfortune finds a diary, which informs Misfortune about the fox's perspective. I must make dangerous mission. It's what I trained to do. I'm nervous, but it's okay. I travel from Center City to Pandora. No information on how long the stay is. I rent a cabin until work is done. Boss told me there are many victims in the town. After a long walk, I arrived at a town called Open Fields. I tried finding the parasite. I didn't find it on the first day. Many victims went missing in the parasite game. I can't help feel sad. I sent message to bus. Some victims not coming to Center City. I see Parasite. It scared me. 
I make dolls for the victim and pictures. If she sees them, good. Parasite recognized. Margot code P 0101222. It likes to play. I have guide for steps though. Margot knows I'm here. Margot plays old trick many times now, but it makes mistake. One victim can hear its voice inside her head. Victim code misfortune. It's nice code. Margot can't have her, says boss. She must be rescued. But I follow steps. I saw Margot take shape. It's scary. Boss sent me message. Watch victim house. I sleep outside. Hide in trash. I fail. Find parasite. Big trouble. Misfortune, watch me. I get warm in stomach. Big eyes. I see Margot play old trick again. Victim don't realize all is again. Must have courage and stop parasite this time. I sent many victims to Senor City. I got level 2 protector. I am confident. Now I have the primeve illumination cane. I try primeve illumination cane in the woods. It's fun. I am practicing to save misfortune. Margo is confused by charms of misfortune. I made a video picking wood and the parasite came. Therefore, it seems as if the fox has been avoiding misfortune as he's following the steps in the guide. He has also been practicing with the illumination cane to get rid of Margo after getting promoted to level 2 protector. Margo seems to be a powerful entity from the beyond who likes to play with his victims before taking them to beyond. But apparently, Misfortune has a special ability and hears his voice. Someone who the bosses or the order of the center city has to rescue. And interestingly, Margo himself is mesmerized by Misfortune's charms. Maybe that's why he's not finishing her off just yet. And maybe he's trying to use her to get rid of the fox, the protector of the center city. In a bookshelf in the cabin, we also can read some books' titles which correlate to who Benjamin is. A spirit animal who tries to learn about better communication reflected on his diary grammatical problems. Benjamin then arrives home when he leads Misfortune to the cellar in order to stay safe from Margot as they can hear him approaching. In the cellar, Misfortune opens a mysterious door which leads to a forest where Misfortune finds Benjamin's bag with a guidebook lying next to it. Reading the guidebook, we learn much more about the intentions of the fox. UST For students of the University of Center City Technology Protect the course Three-step guide Three-step guide to exterminate parasitic beings from the beyond Introduction as ultra-reality forms in hand with concept of time, new realms outside of the constituted free have appeared. After the ultra-war, thousands of beings were discovered as byproducts of the war. They created for themselves a new realm. We refer to it as the beyond. The beyond is, in simple terms, a place of extreme absurdity with no logical laws of physics. We can't allow such beings inside the free at the moment, since the foundation of our reality is based on the energetic and ethical values of the ultra-reality before the ultra-war. The beyond is still a misunderstood realm. We haven't yet found the pieces to connect with it in a logical manner. The few patterns we recognize are the behaviors of some visitors, also known as parasites. They normally enter the third reality, aka Pandora, and seek fresh meat to lure into the beyond. Step 1. The protector must locate the victims and the parasite. Protector's parasite case, P0101222, Margo. Evaluate if the victim is in need of assistance. If so, 
then proceed to step two. Need of assistance checklist. Number one, the victim seems to have forgotten his or her identity. Number two, the victim is already dead but doesn't realize it. Number three, the victim believes the illusions of the beyond are real. Number four, the victim sympathizes with the parasite. Checklist of Parasite Margo. Number one, deforms reality into absurdity. Number two, Parasite seems friendly to lure the victims to play dangerous games. Number three, it shapeshifts into a human animal creature. Number four, it quickly learns about the environment. Language and culture are not an issue for this parasite. Number five, large flocks of blackbirds will appear near the parasite. These birds are the eyes of Margot giving him an overview of his playing ground. Step number two. Use the surroundings to help the victim become aware of the parasite. The protector can, for example, write and paint simple message in public spaces to increase awareness. It is strictly forbidden to interact directly with the victim. It could lead to irreversible trauma inside the victim's mind. If the parasite kills the victim, you will need to proceed to step number three immediately. Step number three, prepare for direct contact with Paper Torn. Therefore, the fox is an agent protector from the five realities, specifically the center city, which is the third and fourth reality. In other words, death. He might also act as a spirit animal leading victims to the rightful place, the center city. But Margot, a parasite from a realm with no laws of physics, kidnaps the victims and takes them to the beyond, which we don't know much of. But whatever it is, it resembles a limbo-like place where the fate of the victims is not defined and they are used by the entities to be fed on and toyed around with. The fox avoided contact with misfortune as much as possible, but as it's too late, he's probably preparing to move into step number three and make direct contact with misfortune. Misfortune gets on a train where she gets a more in-depth interaction with Hiro. Hiro repeats his Japanese line, which means where are you, with the window next to them frosting to say, be aware of the consequences. Children-sized entities then appear with creepy masks and robes before Hiro gets taken by Margot. The entities with the robes were presumably previous victims of Margot, who are now doomed for eternity to exist off-grid from the five realities, being enslaved by the entities in the beyond. Hiro, on the other hand, might have been a victim of Margot, who's been desperately communicating with Misfortune to seek help and escape Margot, whom at the end gets captured by him anyway. When Misfortune goes back home, the voice comes back and convinces Misfortune to play his game yet again in order to see Benjamin. As Misfortune tries to play the game, same events keep on happening from the beginning of the game, which makes Misfortune to break the deal and not play. This angers Margot, who appears and tries to take Misfortune into the beyond when Benjamin suddenly comes through the window. He uses his primeve illumination cane and destroys Margot, presumably. Misfortune wakes up and finds herself back in the house with everything seeming normal in absence of the voice. When she leaves the house, she finds the ghost of her mother and a police officer talking. She has a flashback when she realizes she was ran over by her drunk father driving when she was playing in the garden, hence why we see the tire skid marks in front of the house in the beginning of the game. Benjamin takes Misfortune through a portal into the center city where she finds the dog that was taken by birds or left alone in the park. In there, Misfortune carries on walking the path until she arrives at the door of death. Death kindly invites Misfortune in, 
saying that they were expecting her. The tree behind her with happiness crystals takes a shining beam of light to Miss Fortune's mother in the third reality, which in fact gives her eternal happiness, making her take her shattered mask off and smile maybe for the first time. A happiness that was manifested from within Miss Fortune's heart. At the end, Miss Fortune achieved what she wanted from the beginning, giving eternal happiness to her mother, despite her mother being extremely abusive to her. Therefore, Miss Fortune has been dead all along since the beginning of the game, who wasn't aware that she's dead. With the help of Benjamin, she goes to her rightful place, Center City, a place which has been expecting her. As it seems, she is a special character who will play a major role in the future Kill Monday games, who intends to expand on this universe, including Fran from Frambo. Therefore, in Franbo, the pills called duotine with high levels of ectoplomatine developed by Dr. Oswald and possibly Dr. Leon, in fact open the gate between conscious and subconscious, letting people who take it experience the five realities. What Fran, Dr. Leon and the children who took duotine experienced in the ultra reality were in fact real, according to Little Misfortune. There are also reference points to Luciferns, live pinecones, and even Edward, suggesting that what happened in Fran Bo was actually real, at least the five realities and ultra reality. Negative visions Fran had of herself might have been in her head, or maybe illusions of Remor, who was manifested from Fran's fear and guilt. In summary, it's possible Fran had to come to terms with herself mentally before going to Ethersta throughout the game. Natalia Martinson, the co-creator of Frambo and Little Misfortune, has confirmed in one of their videos, which you can watch on YouTube, that they have plans to expand on the game's universe a lot more, where Fran and Miss Fortune might even meet. They are currently working on a 3D game with Benjamin as the protagonist, I believe, so they need all the support they can get to expand on this creative universe, which can even lead to Fran Bow 2. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, if you did, you can stay tuned by hitting the subscribe button and the notification bell for more horror related content. You can also check out my horror themed clothing by hitting the card above or the link in the description. It's been your host star, till the next video, have a fantastic day.